Warning, some of these videos won't be insane click intensive strategies that take perfection to pull off, and some will. But all of these videos will still take an entire journey through an account, which will still require some unique research and strategies to reach an end goal. But once again we're striving for a goal with the lowest combat level possible in mind, and therefore I welcome you to my series. Lower. Better. So once again I'm trying to stream at least 3 days a week, Monday through Friday, and this depends on my editing schedule and a lot more. And recently I was gifted a subscription to a Twitch channel which quickly made me realize I needed to up my quality of emotes to theirs, therefore I bring you Random W. So I put a lot of effort into these videos and if you guys are enjoying the series once again a subscription to my channel here on YouTube is the best way to show your support to me. Also of course, if I ever hit 1 million subscribers here on YouTube, I will change my first name to Rendy. So as many of you could tell from the last episode, Chesbar was kind of making it over to the dark side and it turns out he's been possessed this whole time. Chesbar. Therefore the first prequest I have to do in order to save Chesbra is throw this doll down a well in the underground pass. But because my mule has been possessed, I don't actually have any help in this quest, and I'll be doing this entire quest solo with 10 HP, 1 prayer, and 1 defense. But first I would have to create the account, and I made the outfit on the account a tribute to one of the greatest runescape legends of all time. To start this whole ordeal, I went ahead and got my range up to 30 with a cannon to avoid HP EXP, did chompy bird hunting, and then went ahead and did biohazard and plague city to start underground pass. And for this quest line I would also have to do waterfall quest and sheep herder. Next I began work on the account by getting all the skill requirements I would need basically up until regicide. So the main skill I had to knock out was the 51 agility which then I could summer pie to 56 for a regicide quest later on. I did the agility rec first because for once I wanted to have high agility for underground pass and experience what it might be like. Now when I got to 48 agility I was able to summer pie and go to the wilderness course which of course would be a very dangerous territory. But luckily I had my own personal bodyguard to help me through this task. So dude. And he warded away all kinds of dangerous foes which could have killed me for my high priced inventory. Lastly I went and splashed my magic level up to 33 as I would need telegrab for the solo method of this next quest. Finally after getting all the requirements I would need up until regicide, I was ready to go start the underground pass. And although I've already covered the entire underground pass in my potato only hardcore Iron Man series, this time I would be taking it on a little differently, being solo, and I was hoping to do this all in one inventory before I decided to die to a well. And yes, that's what happens if you forget to put the orbs in the furnace before you proceed down to the next level. But we're actually going to take this from the top, and I'm going to cover the main parts of the quest that were a little bit difficult or required unique methods. So once again, in order to get past these traps here that typically hit 15s or the remainder of your HP, I'm going to stay under full HP, go over the trap, and if I start to fall, being a stall, I will double stack an interface with my prayer tab, and then the interfaces won't close before the damage tick, allowing me one tick to eat my food and tick eat the trap. And already this brings great memories back of potato only, and of course our paths intertwine with one another. So 
So what's weird is I noticed every NPC in the underground pass is aggressive to you based on your combat level, except for these level 14 zombies in the next room, and a room further down the road. So here I didn't even have to wait for a de-aggression on potato only, but as long as I kept an eye on the higher level 20 zombies, I could make my way through the next room. So basically what I'm going to do here is just pray to R and Jesus, and then if I go under my HP, I will combo eat back to full HP, brood to 13. Now I'm going to go ahead and skip forward to the paladins, because I wouldn't be doing this with alt accounts. To kill the paladins, I would set my cannon up in the middle of the room, then run back to the unaggressive level 14 zombie area, and then waited out until one of them had died. So in order to collect the badges, I would just log out and stop my cannon from firing, therefore stopping the other paladins from aggressing me as soon as I were to enter the room, and from there I would just pick them up. Skipping forward to the next part of this quest I'll be covering because I am soloing it, is actually the three demons need to kill for their amulets in order to get the Shadow of Ivan. So to kill and loot these NPCs solo, I would basically set my cannon on the southern and western outskirts in order to actually kill the south and western spawns and then telegrab their loot from that location. So in order to kill the third and last demon on the northern platform, I would have to wait till the first demon respawns south and instantly grab his aggression east so the cannon can actually fire to the northern demon. And I would know when this demon is finally dead by turning my game sounds up. So from here, I would also have to loot this demon which was even more difficult, because after the 5 minutes or so of finally killing it, I would then have to go all the way around the agility obstacles, hope I didn't fall too many times, in order to get back to a safe place where I could telegrab its third loot. All within a 2 minute window before the item had a possibility of despawning. Now another difficult part about this quest which made it hard to solo was basically that I had such a low combat level that Solus would aggress me. So if there was a Solus attacking me or an Ivan Disciple on some of these jumps, I would have to try and time my jumps at full HP between the attacks of these NPCs. This is because the fall damage and the NPC attacking me can stack and actually kill me. And of course, the most difficult part about this quest I'll be covering in the solo aspect is that of the spider. Now in order to get the effect placed on the doll after killing Kalrag, you have to be in an area where he can aggress you. So I put my cannon in a strategic spot and hoped I didn't die setting this thing up because these blessed spiders can too hit me. From here I would fire the cannon, run around to the western side where Kalrag could aggress me, and then go ahead and hope that one of the 30 shots would hit Kalrag. Now even if the cannon did get one out of these 30 shots off on Kalrag, I found it hard to actually get a second shot off because other NPCs would stack inside Kalrag's body and sometimes have pit over him. And even though it was difficult to maybe get even one or if I was especially lucky two shots off on Kalrag, standing in any other location seemed to be even more difficult getting off these shots. And because Kalrag had so many NPCs surrounding him and my cannon could not fire at him that often, along with the fact he had HP regeneration, this basically took over one hour. And the worst part about this whole ordeal was that I basically could get the last fire off on Kalrag while I was running south to the northwestern safe spot, and if this cannon shot fired on Kalrag before I made it to the safe spot, there would be no effect applied to the doll because I would be outside of his aggression zone. But fortunately this time, we had a little luck on our side. Lastly, in order to save chest bra and complete the underground pass, I would have to make sure my tick cycle was exactly correct on entering the door and throwing the doll in the well, in order to avoid all damage and therefore not get one hit in a singular tick, which is possible in the Ivan room. To do this perfectly, you have to enter the door on the 9th tick Ivan throws his spell cast, and then use the doll on the well on exactly the 8th tick after he throws his second spell cast once you've opened the door. Did I say Ivan? Well, I meant chest bra.
So after spending all this time and effort after saving the now unpossessed chest bra, guess what the first thing he says to me is? And he's right. Remember that fire kit video I made back in April that was 200 hours condensed down into 40 minutes of video footage? Well the Golden Gnome nominations are now linked on Jagex's Twitter and I'll link that in the description below. So if you really enjoyed the video and you want to vote it for the best video of the year as Chess Bra suggests, well, be my guest. Also, we are new to YouTube and actually this is the first frequent year I've been uploading, so there is a category for that as well. To the next quest! So Regicide has its ups and downs, but mainly, downs. To start, I logged out every time I saw the elf tracker, so this time I could actually see him shot down in the elf camp, rather than shot down in the woods and left to rot there. And the other first thing I would have to do is cross leaf traps like I did on Potato Only, where I would have to make sure I lowered my HP below max so I could ticket it with two interfaces, similar to how I did on the Underground Pass 15 damage traps. Therefore, throughout this quest, since I didn't own a rock cake or anything similar, stick traps were actually my best friend, as long as I remembered an anti-poison. And once again, when passing through the dense forest of this quest, I requested a log out so I wouldn't actually get attacked by the Tyrus guard, and then went back through the trees. And for the tripwire trap this time on the way to the Tyrus camp, unlike Potato Only, I wouldn't have to teleport out, but I could also double interface stall a trap to tick eat it, as long as I ate above the two hits that would come at me from the bows being shot, and I kept my HP low before I crossed this trap. Now to actually kill the Tyrus guard, I set my cannon in the exact tile that would reach him, and then I went ahead and brought him over to the rock, where I would log out to refill the cannon if I was quick enough before he were to move. And finally, by getting through the underground pass yet again with 10 HP, I could complete the quest. Before going on to the next quest, I ran back to the GE to get some supplies I would need, but I ran into a giant party of people, which apparently were in some kind of contest for Dunfor stream. That or it was a war party. At the end of the day, I figured out that this is probably a contest for the worst dressed, and I rewarded a noob even though it wasn't my contest, because this guy deserves something for this terrible outfit. To the next quest. Now I would have to go back to that terrible elven territory in order to find the scouts and start roving elves quest. And because I'm 10 HP and my melee stats are so terrible here, there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to solo this moss giant, and of course, Chesbra is now on our good side, so we're going to have him help us out for this one. Chesbra. So although you can't bring pretty much all armor and weapons into this area, you can bring most jewelry, and Chesbra was able to bring Rings of Recoil. Therefore, by Chesbra doing all neutral damage through Rings of Recoil, I was able to go in and hit a 1, and then have him finish off the kill and still get the drop. Also, check out this perfectly timed and not mistakenly done ticky. Anyways, from here I returned with the good news, got the seed, and planted it in order to finish the quest. Basically for Morning's End Part 1, I had no clue what was going on, and I thought I might even be breaking Twitch Terms of Services at one point in the quest. So unfortunately there is a 60 range requirement on this quest, and that would put our combat level up just a bit more. And after I finished the 60 range requirement, I logged off for the night, and Chesbrough sent me a message the next day, saying he actually geared me at the bank for the next step in the quest. 
and I can't even make this up, but the next step in the quest was to go to the Mortar headquarters, which I couldn't even access because apparently I didn't have the proper gear. And guess what? This was because Chespra put me in Plague Trousers, not Mourner Trousers. Chespra. So therefore come to find out, Chespra hasn't been sabotaging us this whole time during this series because he was possessed, but it's actually just because he's purely idiotic. Also guess what? I freaked out because I thought a Mourner was behind me until I found out that it was literally Chespra's cousin. Not even kidding, this is Chespra's cousin in real life. So after banking and getting the actual proper attire on my legs, I was able to make it in the Mourner headquarters and complete the quest for Morning's End Part 1. And unfortunately, this quest gives a load of HP EXP, putting my combat up even more, but to the final level of 38. And now for our last quest, a quest that some people deem one of the worst quests in the entire game, Morning's End Part 2. But in all reality, this quest wasn't as bad as I thought, and I finished it in under an hour. So the main strategies of this quest was basically just making sure I safe spotted or ran away from shades because they could hit 13s. Of course, I also used the north and south tiles of the middle objects which shined light, because most cases this would actually block off shades unless there was just too many in the area. The only true safe spot in this quest and one I would resort back to often was the middle room with two staircases that go downwards into it. I would also use some of the light rooms with only one shade to heal back to full before I made a trek back to a different area. And for almost every tick I would be running around this place, I would be eating purple sweets at the same time. Now I also had the lowest possible agility after all the quest rewards and requirements, which was 53, meaning I had a very low chance of getting across the handhelds for parts of this quest. But it turns out, we're blessed by the chest. And this is because even though we only have less than an 11% chance to get across these handholds with our agility level, we got it the first try. And on the second attempt, we got it the second try. Therefore, we are truly blessed by the chest. So I actually went through almost 800 purple sweets in this entire quest running around, and therefore I almost got it all done in one inventory, but actually, 800 sweets weren't enough, and for the last few steps I would have to bank more sweets and then finish the quest. I could do this all day. And there you have it. We've now completed the Morning's End Part 2 questline at the lowest combat possible, being 38. Thank you all once again for making these videos possible with your support. If you guys are enjoying the series, then hit the subscribe button below so you'll see the new uploads as soon as they come out. And on a last note, If you vote for me, all of your wildest dreams will come true.